Well, good morning. I uh, just wanted to start off by saying that when it comes to renewable energy, you know, and I'm talking about solar and wind, I, I want you to know that I think right there are probably three, and notice I say three, I think three of the, the greatest inventions we've ever found. Wind and, of course, solar, and I think number three is the uh, elastic waistband in my pants. <laughs> I mean, that's, today I think that is three of the best inventions ever. You know, my background as an instructor, of course, I'm a cheerleader for renewables, but I want you to look at it a little different here today. I want you to think about the opportunities that they could bring for our community. I'm often asked, does renewables make sense? Of course, yeah, the answer, I, I believe, is yes, they do. And I kind of hope to be able to share that with you today. I do want you to realize as we, as we go out and we uh, talk about renewables in the public, sometimes it's a challenge. Uh, plain and simple, it's a challenge. Um, today, if you think about global warming, you know, I mean, today here in Minnesota, look at uh, that concept, global warming. Yeah. Well, in a room full of people, think about this. Typically, 50% of those people do not believe in global warming. So, you know, there's a challenge. Don't even, actually, don't even try and convince them. However, if you look at that room full of people, I want you to understand that 100% of those people in that room believe that conservation makes sense. So, you know, we have to use that kind of to our advantage. You know, getting back to that question, does renewable energy make sense? Well, I think it does. I think it is really important at this point to kind of offset um, electrical generation from fossil fuels. And so, you know, I would say yes, renewable energy does make social sense. There's no doubt about that. Um, this is a uh, utility-based size wind farm. You know, it's, it's kind of amazing when we talk about wind. We know we're generating electricity from wind. Uh, utility scale, we're also generating electricity from these solar photovoltaic, we refer to that as PV, systems. And, and this large system, if you think about it, is a utility generating system. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of things here that are, are exciting about the development of wind and solar. But, you know, I, I want to kind of talk about that concept of, uh, how would I say, social sense. And, and take that a little bit further, actually. I want to also talk about social sense and economic sense. Think about this. Austin, Minnesota, could benefit from the economic sense that renewable energy can create. Now, you saw the wind turbine. Oh, I got to go back to that. You know, I, actually, I think, I think renewable energy is beautiful. I took that picture one morning on the way to work. Yeah, just uh, out, rolled down the window, took it. Um, even solar PV. Now, Take a look at this. Now, first off, I want you to know, I, just in sharing this social sense of renewable energy, this is the way we create 90% of the electricity we use, 90%. This is what we call a thermal generation plant. Now, what that means, thermal generation, is, um, is they convert water to steam to turn turbines. Yep. 90% of our generation of electricity comes from this. Now also, think about this. These facilities use 40% of the water we withdraw. 40%. That's the same amount that is used today in agriculture. Now, take a look at the news right now. Take a look at the news right now. We know we're dealing with this drought. Actually, yeah, after we melt all this snow, we'll be dealing with drought. 
you know, in the headlines right now in California. Here's where this gets really um, kind of to be a challenge for us. Think about this. Right now, and this was true last summer, there were farmers that had to reduce the amount of water they used to grow our crops. These facilities, that 40% of water they withdraw, that's 136 billion gallons a day. Yeah, 136 billion gallons a day. Right now, and if you um, want to back this up, take a look at the uh, National Renewable Energy Laboratory. It's a federal division uh, of the government that's analyzing renewable energy and energy needs in general. They're predicting because of low water levels in rivers and lakes that this summer we will be curtailing thermal generation. Curtailing is a word that's been used uh, really in the past about wind farms. You know, we, we have to curtail because nobody's buying the electricity right now, so we shut turbines down. But this is really interesting when they start talking about curtailing a natural gas or oil or coal-fired plant because we don't want to affect the, the water. Well, so it does make um, social, uh, I think, uh, social sense. But now let's talk a little bit about um, um, kind of the uh, environmental sense that uh, renewable energies can make, and particularly solar. The exciting thing about us living in Minnesota and, and really, I, I, the sad part about it is I don't think a lot of people realize this, but 2013, the Minnesota legislature enacted legislation that mandates investor-owned utilities to an, receive 1.5% of their electrical generation from renewable energy. Think about that, 1.5% of the electricity they generate has to come from renewable energy, and that renewable energy that they're mandating is solar PV. I just, uh, I find it amazing that people don't understand what's taking place here. Um, that legislation has driven made in Minnesota solar incentives. Think about that. You will receive incentives for installing solar modules, solar panels, we refer to them as modules, that were built right here in Minnesota. Already we have two companies right now in Minnesota building solar modules. More companies are already looking at the area. The other part of that solar legislation was um, basically referred to as um, solar value tariff. That's taking place actually and being announced here in March. And what that means is that if you're installing solar, some utilities will need to pay you for the, not only the power you generate, but the benefit that that brings to their grid because now they don't have to increase output. So that's, you're, you're being paid in a number of different ways. The one that I think is most exciting is the solar green gardens. Solar green gardens means that, plain and simple, if you don't have room on your house for solar, you don't have a spot in your backyard, you live in an apartment, well, get a load of this, uh, you could invest in a system that's maybe positioned out here in the industrial park. Yeah, you could buy into that, receive uh, a return on that. And that's uh, that solar PV garden or solar garden, community garden that's also um, known as. You're going to hear a lot more about that here in March. Um, it's hard to see, but this is, yes, this is a solar array on the side of this house. Uh, this is my favorite picture. Can you see the bird up there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and incidentally, the wind turbine we have at Riverland Community College, we actually have birds that sit sometimes on the top of it or on the blades. I, I always tell them it's... Uh, it's kind of a cute bird roost. That's when it's not operating, of course. You know. Yeah, when it's not operating, of course. Okay, if the technology, the solar technology and the incentives are driving us, you know, uh, it's, it looks like an exciting industry. Well, there are gaps. There are technology gaps. And this is what I want the people in Austin to understand. This is where that economic sense comes in. Austin as a community should take advantage of this. 
What you see there is the pole, the hardware, the materials that we call the racking. Yeah, all of that. Now, right now today, I want you to know, solar PV modules, panels, and the inverters that changes the DC to AC. Those devices have come down incredibly in price. Absolutely incredibly. Don't take my word for it, look into it. But on a solar PV installation, here's the problem. All of this we call the balance of system. It's the, it's the racking, it's the poles, it's the interconnection, the permitting. All of this is gone up. Today on a solar PV installation, your cost ends up being almost three quarters of this, the balance of system. And I think we got to look outside of the box. I think we got to think outside of the box. Um, what I'm hoping happens here is that we get together business, community leaders, um, high schools, the Austin High, Riverland, um, the um, engineering colleges in the area, and we have competitions to develop and find cheaper and more cost-effective ways to install solar. Yep. And the other side of the technology, of course, wind. Now, wind is here to stay. There's no doubt about it. You know, um, since 2005, the cost of generating electricity from wind has dropped 90%. Why don't you hear about that? 40% of that in the last four years. XL Energy this spring is starting construction on 600 megawatts of wind right here. And why? Um, if you go to the XL Energy website, you'll see that their chief executive officer says why it's comparable to the generation of electricity from oil and natural gas. Think about that. When they, when they say it it's cost effective, it's cost effective. But once again, the technology gap with wind. Here, I want you to think about this. I want the community to rally around this. There's opportunities here, economic opportunities. There's growth here. I, I want you to know the turbines in this area are six to 10 years old. A lot of people don't realize that. I mean, the ones that are out here now. They're all off warranty. You know what that means, off warranty? The people that own these turbines are going to look to the best way to maintain them, repair them, retrofit them. Think about that, retrofit them. They're willing to invest money. One of the greatest areas here that's going to create an industry right in this area, could create an industry right in this area, is the refurnishing and repair of blades. Yeah, these blades take a lot of wear and tear and it really affects the operation output of these turbines. Here's a picture of a turbine gearbox. Every one of these turbines has a gearbox that could be rebuilt. That's a company here in Austin that should be rebuilding those gearboxes. You know, the crazy thing about wind turbines is you or I could sit down on the internet and order any of these replacement parts. There's no doubt about it. Uh, in the background there, there's the generator. The generator, you can't believe the, 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 the components that need to be repaired, the, the brushes, the, um, the electrical systems. Uh, you know, that's the other thing about it too. These turbines, the, the people that own these turbines, the owner's reps, are going to do anything to not only keep these turbines running, but think about this, to improve their output. And here's what I'm really proposing. I think the city of Austin and working with the DCA and local business leaders and again the high schools, I think we need to look at creating a supply chain and parts repair depot right here, a regional supply chain. I really feel that at this point from a business development standpoint, this is going to lead and could lead to jobs in this area. 
Take a look at this building. Uh, you know, this building is owned by DCA, Development Corporation of Austin. This building is out uh, east of here. You know, it's in Moore County. Still, it's the community development aspect I want you to look at. That building was designed to build fiberglass cement truck um, tanks. You know the big tank on the back of the cement truck, truck that turns and mixes the cement? It was designed to build fiberglass. Now that building had to be built with special fire suspension equipment. Well fiberglass, if anything goes wrong, it, it'll burn. So this building was specially designed to work with fiberglass. It's sitting empty right now. The fiberglass cement truck market went away. That building could become a regional repair facility for wind turbine blades. And John Gary knows it, and I think this, the community of Austin should know that. There's an opportunity here for jobs. You know, um, let me just say in kind of in closing, you've, you've heard about Rochester, destination, what, Med City, right? And you know about Austin, destination, spam and research, right? Well, I think it should be Austin Destination Renewables. And I think working together, we could do that and create jobs and economic development for our businesses in the community. So, thank you.